Hey all, this is Dan with DS Design. I'm just gonna quickly cover a project I've got going to fix some drainage issues at our house in case anyone is dealing with something similar and can take something away with how to approach it. We've got a sump pump that runs quite frequently. And in the worst of times, it pumps and it's probably off for about 20 seconds before it runs again. That's all the time it takes to fill the basket. Part of the issue is just groundwater. We've got a water table that is back up to this ditch level, which is not far from the drain tile at the house. I've run it transit across here and when you go down to where the drain tile is it's not too much different elevation so groundwater is part of it but I also have uh, some poorly done gutter systems from the original plan when they built the house the entire back half of the house here feeds from the high roof down onto the low roof and then all that half of the house comes down one small downspout and originally went over to a little pond here where it was supposed to go through a, a corrugated pipe go into the pond and then spill down to that one which never seemed to work right no matter how hard it rained we never really saw this top basin get full or be you know, flowing down there to the bottom one so I, and then I was never quite sure what happened with the water when I pulled the pipe out here I had a, a hole in the elbow where it would turn and I corrugated and so some of it was just spilling out of the pipe and going right back down next to the foundation into the drain tile and uh, I'm not sure if any of it backed up. I tried to watch it at different times. Um, but not a good situation because what would happen with the way they planned this is that even if it worked properly, all that water would come down here, spill down, and just pool in the backyard, very slowly make its way out. But I believe that all this water that would pool in the backyard here and sit uh, during really heavy rains for a couple days, really, is seeping into the ground and adding to the groundwater however much can soak in there's just contributing to the groundwater level near the house which goes back into the drain tile and has to be pumped out by the sump pump we've had a wet basement I don't want a base uh, wet basement again and so I'm uh, making some changes here to fix this so what I've, what I've got going I'm gonna be replacing this gutter the next day or two with a much higher volume one that's going to have twice twice the volume in the downspout. During really heavy rains, we've actually seen water coming over this bottom gutter because it just can't keep up with the capacity when all that has to make the turns and go down and hit that corrugated pipe underground. And if you've never really looked at these, when it comes to your dust collection that flows air or things that flow water, fluid dynamics is all the same. Whenever you've got this kind of corrugated or a flexible pipe for dust collection, this probably flows 70% of the uh, water volume that a straight 3 inch would do instead of a instead of the corrugated 3 inch it's very restrictive uh, because of all the turbulence that's introduced by the by the ribbing in there so the new setup will be a larger downspout it's about to go on going into a 4 inch pipe that I've trenched all the way out to our ditch I was lucky that the slope worked out just right I have enough slope all the way across here to go all the way out, bring it straight down to the bottom of the ditch and get all this water away from the house. While I'm at it and have it dug up, I'm tying in the detached shop. Well, it's only half the roof, the front half, um, but that also typically would just spill out and then make its way down and contribute to the water in the backyard. And everything will end up going straight out to this ditch and I'm gonna put a couple of pop-ups on this pipe. Haven't ever used the uh, pop-ups and I'm not sure if I have faith in just having one at the end. So I'm going to put one four or five feet up on a tee and another one uh, just as a backup. And I'm going to install the, the last one just a little up the hillside so that it's not down where it's really muddy. Don't just trust that things were done the way they should have been just because the house was built by a builder. We have a lot of stuff in this house that wasn't done well, including this downspout that dumps out on the driveway, which is not only hard on the driveway, but this corner of the foundation has settled and the floor inside is cracked and you can see how the driveway has dropped away. And we have issues all along the front here with the driveway dropping. I'm gonna be tackling that this summer too. And some of it is just probably totally compacted, but I think that this corner dropped because of all this water that would seep its way into the, into the soil here under this and loosen things up and contributed to more settling than there should have been here. This should have been dumped out the backside of, the, of this gutter and not onto the driveway. So I'll be fixing that. And in a rather extreme case of what the heck were they thinking when they put this together, that downspout 
I thought tied in with the one on the corner and there's an outlet down here in the rocks right there but as I looked at this last year I found that there was wasn't anything tied together underground there and the downspout over here went into the ground and came out this way where there had always been a bit of a mystery soft spot behind the rocks and the landscaping and just stopped there. I have no idea what the plan was. There's not really any slope. There's nowhere for it to go as it came out. It was an idiotic way to install it. So now that one runs to a separate outlet over here. So don't trust the builder if you're having issues. Just double check everything, see where it sheds to, and not only where does it get out, but where does it go from there? These two pick up most of the front part of the house here. And again, it spills down into the backyard and contributes to water that just sits here while it very slowly drains away towards the, uh, the backyard. I'm throwing in an edit here for one thing I found later on with the same downspot out front that went to nowhere. I've had to unplug it a few times just reaching up and pulling leaves out when I finally took a good look at it. It looks like whoever installed this had their pet squirrel chew a hole instead of doing it right. So just another example of making sure you look at things. Hey everyone, Future Dan here. Uh, at least six months in the future since I did this project in the spring and just now getting around to uh, trying to edit a video and put it together. I realized I didn't have a, uh, a good wrap up for it. Uh, and you don't want to look at me, so here's a cute dog instead. Everything worked out pretty well on the project with the uh, larger gutter and everything that's feeding underground worked really well. I've had, had to uh, come and remove leaves from the clean out a few times, but I'm sure that's uh, just normal maintenance for them. Seems to have made a difference in the drainage in the yard, although we had the heaviest rains in the spring before I did this. But I do believe the uh, changes are effective. I'm going to have a follow-up video repairing the damage at the front of the garage where the uh, driveway had sunk down, and you'll be surprised at what I found when I got in there. In the spring, I've now got a plan to fix a uh, sunken sidewalk and tie it into the repairs I did to the driveway. So that's a ways off since we're in January. Following that, I have several project builds that I've just never gotten a video put together on, as well as setting up a new CNC with a full vacuum table and an auto tool changer. And I'll be doing just a couple of short videos on. Leave me a comment if you have anything to add or hit the like if you enjoyed the video, got something out of it. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one.